Okay, we see people and welcome back to your favorite YouTube channel. So today guys, like always, another weekly analysis for you. On the screen, other pairs will be analyzed today, but make sure you do stay to the end of the video. So we'll be breaking down each pair, what happened this week and potentially what can be happening next week. But with all that said, I hope you do enjoy the video. Now, let's get into it. Okay, so first up we've got Euro USD. So for this pair, we are still looking very, very bearish. Coming into the week, we were looking for some retracement to take advantage of that. The market was coming into a very, very key area, one around the 1.0800 area. And I said, coming into the week, we we're looking for buys back up to 1.1. And as you can see, nice push there. We actually pushed past 1.1 and actually came back to retest some structure, which I was not expecting, but we did see quite bullish Euro this week across a lot of pairs so we did have that break and retest essentially of that price swing low now time resistance wicked into it a nice aggressive reaction now the market is still very very bearish for euro usd if we look at the higher time frames uh, and i'm talking about the monthly here you can see that if you look at the past few months the market tried to make a, a new high here but fell beneath um, that previous high there so there is a high probability that we're actually going to take out this low and come back and test some support there from a technical standpoint so that low there could be taken out in the next couple of weeks um, depending on momentum and everything but euro is still looking bearish and this pair doesn't have you know much sign of recovery at all so i'm going to highlight that wick there because potentially price could be you know heading towards that area but we still are holding that key support level which i was talking from uh, my weekly analysis last time um which is where we're expecting to see that bounce from so we've got this weekly candle here which you can see is pulled back and giving us a really nice range to work with with that weekly um, high and that weekly low as long as we don't go and take out that weekly high i'm still expecting bearish momentum to be intact uh, and more downside for euro usd so as long as we don't start taking out this level here which we held on to this week i'm expecting price to eventually come back to that 1.06500 level so with that information taken onto the 4h time frame you can see a nice pullback there some low highs uh, being printed uh, i'm just looking for a pullback now so essentially as long as we don't push past this high here or we could we could potentially wick through but as long as we don't you know break past uh, and start um pushing further we might come back and revisit wick above it or something like that um just to, you know have a bit of a false break break some new highs and and then roll over so as long as we don't push past this and and stay bullish uh, i am looking for sales from anywhere beneath this area targets right back down at 1.0800 which is that previous wick here and then if we can break through this level i'm expecting the market to roll over back down into 1.06500 so uh, i may even look for this opportunity depending how bearish we are uh, next week so only looking for sales for your usd we're looking for buyers last week taking advantage of that retracement now the market is looking very very bearish as well so we could pull back into this area here and then roll over but as long as we don't take out this level i'm still bearish looking for some more downside for your usd Okay, so next up we've got USD JPY. So for this pair, very, very bullish this week, specifically on Friday, as you can see, big push there to the upside. Again, coming into the week, I was looking for shorts. The market was holding uh, a key level of resistance. And I said, if we can hold that, I'm looking for shorts because I do believe the market will, will roll over. However, as you can see, we did actually break through, had a retest uh, and price flew to the upside. Uh, on my weekly analysis, I did say that if we do break through this, I'm expecting price to revisit those highs around the 116300 116400 area which is these highs up here um i said potentially even 117 which price is actually past that right now so uh, the market is looking very very bullish but i do believe we can actually push even higher to 118 i'm looking at the higher time frames to get um, a bit more of a perspective on this as you can see there's no price action on the left for us to refer to so i have to go to the higher time frames to find some areas and you can see we've got this high up here which did start this bearish trend for quite a while so we know price could be heading up to here to react with this level 
um, before seeing some downside. So 118 is that area. And I do believe with a momentum, you know, candle like that on the weekly, we probably will see price pushing to 118 uh, before seeing some downside. So taking that information into the lower time frames, you can see we broke through this prior high without the retest. So I'm looking at um, two things happening for you, Shapey Y, next week. You know, either which one happens, I don't really mind. Just looking for good opportunities to trade it. So we've, we've broken through this level. We've never had the retest. So we could see potentially price run out momentum, find resistance early on and roll over before seeing that one last push to 118. Or the more likely uh, situation, this momentum stays intact. Price makes its way into 118. And from there, there probably will be some nice sells back down into this area. So we'll probably have a nice gap to fill. Uh, and also, you know, we haven't retested this area, so we could see, you know, a move lower to come back and retest that um, area that price just broke through. So, you know, either which way, we're looking for sales around 118 and buys around the 16400 area. And depending, you know, how the week goes and what happens with them, uh, with momentum will depend what I do with UCJY. If we just roll over, I'll be looking for a high low somewhere in this area for another push up. But if we do sustain, um, I will be looking for sales around the 118. Of course, always make sure you wait for confirmation because there's nothing saying that we have to hold this area. We could obviously break through, but if we do hold, looking for sales for 118 back down into um, 116400 for the retest, but if we do roll over and see some downside, we'll look for the higher low for the push back up. So basically, you're just looking to play between these two levels. Not really fussed about the price action in between, just focusing on what price does at these areas. Um, and that is the plan for the week for USDJPY. Okay, so now I'm going to take a look at USD CAD. So USD CAD, um, as you can see, nice push to the upside. Nice push to the downside as well, to be honest, that the pair is still kind of a little bit choppy. Coming into the week, uh, I was very, very neutral. I said I'm waiting for a break to the upside or to the downside uh, before I do form a bias for this pair. Uh, you can see that we did manage to break to the upside. We had these two, you know, fake outs um, beforehand. Uh, and then we had this, um, this move uh, this week to the upside. So I was looking for the retest for price to push bullish again. But as you can see, climb back into that range. So it's still very, very messy. I have noticed this trend line that price is holding uh, and is keeping the market slowly pushing to the upside here. You now we can classify this down move here as a fake out. Now the market is coming back into it. So it potentially could push bullish uh, again. I'm still favoring the longs over the, over the shorts for USD CAD. But again, in the market like this, you know, anything can happen. So taking that information into the 4H, uh, I will be looking for price to give me a move higher back above this resistance just to be on the safe side, just because price, you know, has respected this a few times now. So if we do push bullish from here, we could find resistance uh, and then roll over. So if we can push bullish, which looks like we potentially could back above this, we'll be looking for the retest. Uh, and longs back into these highs uh, and then potentially into 1.29500 which is the high all the way up there so that is the plan for USD CAD looking for something like this you can look for longs on the trend line area uh, prices pushing to a nice area of support demand you can see nice spikes to the downside in the 4H big move up another spike into that same area around 1.27 and we're seeing some bullish momentum from that so you can look for buys here it's slightly more risky because we do run the chance of the market rolling over but if we do get back above this 1.27800 level we do have a high chance the market will um, maintain that momentum and probably push back to those highs uh, at 1.29 and 1.29500 so that's the most optimal play for used to CAD um, if this level doesn't hold, the trend line doesn't hold, and this level doesn't hold, um, and we, we push through, we'll be looking for a lower high for the sales, because at that point, we're taking out that structure. I do believe we're going to head to 1.25, um, this low here anyway, if that does happen. So if we do break to the downside, I will be looking for something like this, and the retest of the trend line, and that um, support term resistance. I'll be looking for something like that. This is the, the opportunity I think will happen, but again, what you think doesn't always happen. So we'll look for the push above, retest and continuations. If it doesn't hold, we'll look for the break, retest and sell to the downside.
Sorry to interrupt the video guys, but if you are enjoying the content and you're finding it useful, make sure you go hit the subscribe button down below and also make sure you drop a like as well. It really does help the channel out. But anyway, back to the video. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to Euro Pound. So Euro Pound this week, big move to the upside, as you can see, another Euro pair. Um, we saw a lot of Euro strength, big push to the upside there for Euro Pound, breaking above that critical level of prior support around the 0.3 area. Um, was term resistance, but price broke through that quite easily. So coming into the week, I was mainly bearish on Euro Pound. We moved that to the downside. I was looking to see the market hold this area and roll over. I said, if we do climb back above, we'll be looking for some of these areas up there. Um, but as you can see, we actually closed above nicely and the price just continued very, very bullish. So the market on the higher time frames, because we're still looking at that higher time frame level on the monthly, which price is still uh, trading above. Looks like the market just whipped below to take out some liquidity beneath this and it has recovered you know, very, very dramatically. So now that we've grabbed liquidity, market could potentially move to the upside. Again, we still do have this very, very choppy, uh, choppy bearish trend here. You can probably see it better on the weekly. So we do have that choppy bearish trend, which could still you know, um, push us to the downside if we don't take it out. Um, but with that liquidity grabbed, you know, it gives us an extra incentive. Um, that we could push bullish from now on. So um, Euro pound now, uh, we've come into some local resistance here on the daily. You can see resistance there, breaks the upside, fake out, retest, retest, retest. So obviously this 0.84 area is an area that the market is struggling to break through. So I believe if you do break through 0.4, we'll probably see 0.84, sorry, we'll probably see that bigger move higher back to some of these areas for Euro pound. So, for next week, I'm looking mainly at this area here because, again, strong rejection, looking for that momentum to sustain. Now, we'll be looking for a high low somewhere in this region here, coming into this 0.83100 support. As you can see, really strong area in the past. So, I'm looking for that higher low for that push back into 0.84. And if we can break through 0.84, break and retest opportunity back to these highs here on the left. So two main areas I'm looking at, I'm not really focused on the sales at all for Euro pound. If we do go and break through this level here, then yeah, maybe the sales will look better, but I'm mainly still focused on the buys, uh, simply because we're still above that higher time frame support level. So I'm still looking for a push higher on. So looking for these two scenarios, because there is a chance that we might push bullish suddenly back above the level, retest it, could give us a nice opportunity to go long again, uh, and a push into 0.84600, which are these highs. But if we do pull back down, we'll be looking for a high low in this area, and a push back into 0.84 there. So those are the main plays I'm looking for uh, for next week. And yeah, targets overall at 0.84600, but first target, back to 0.84. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to AUD USD. So for this pair this week, not too much happened. We did wick into 0.74, which we were looking for a push into that 0.74 area. And I said uh, for my analysis for the week, we're looking for sales from that area. And we did see quite, um, quite a strong drop from that. Didn't manage to get into any sales because we didn't see any retracement, but you know we did take a, a big dive and the targets were back into this 0.73 area to retest that broken resistance, now turn support, which the market is coming back to right now. So um, my analysis for the week ahead, I'm looking mainly for sales for ADUSD. I'm actually expecting the market to break back beneath this area here uh, and push into some of these areas especially this area here at least uh, at 0.71600 uh, which was that price support for this move to the upside the market has tried to sustain the break of this level here it failed first time quite miserably big wick to the upside come all the way back down so this bullish momentum depleted tried to do it again and now we're seeing more rejection so if we can climb back below this level here, we'll be looking for sales back down to that area. Of course, because we're still trading above, there is obviously that chance that we could go bullish, but I'm still favoring those shorts because I'm expecting price to break back below. So obviously the highest uh, opportunity 
most probable opportunity to be waiting for that break, waiting for that retest or a low high somewhere, then looking for the shorts back down into 0.71600, so something like that. Uh, if we do have a bounce from this level back into some resistance here, I probably will look for sales again and anticipate another move back into um, that support level, expecting another um, a break essentially this time. So I would still be looking for sales, but just let you guys know this is definitely a more risky opportunity because the market is still technically bullish. And if we do respect this level, we could actually break through this area and head back to these highs. But now that I've seen you know, multiple rejections of this level, I'm expecting price to roll over. So if you do see that move higher, uh, I'm going to expect the market to you know, turn bearish from that uh, and, uh, and break back below 0.73. So that is the plan for the week. If we do take out this resistance here, then that's the only way I'll look for longs and obvious targets will be back to these highs around 0.74. 300 so uh, if we do take them out you know something like this again not really an opportunity i'm focused on but if that does happen you know i will shift my bias for those long setups but mainly i'm i'm, I'm short short bias for abusd best probable scenario will be the break of this level here and the retest of it and then shorts back into 0.71600 for next week Okay, so now let's take a look at NZD CAD. So for this pair coming into the week, we were bearish looking for sales. The market was coming into this previous swing high around the 0.87500 level. So as you can see, the market pushed bearish, pulled back, formed a few wicks, and rolled over forming that high and that low. So we knew you know, this area would be a great place to look for sales uh, as it was our previous high and the market still respecting that structure. So looking for sales, we did see that move to the downside. I did highlight some targets um, for Entity CAD, which is mainly this swing low here, mainly because taking that across, it's a major, major level. Um, so looking for a push back down into this area, which it didn't quite reach. Um, not too far away, but 0.86 300 was the target. Um, but coming into next week, uh, I'm looking for the buying opportunities. Um, not um, to push bullish big time, but I do think you can take advantage of some retracement, possibly back into that 0.87 500 level. And I've got two areas where I'm focused on. Um, if you're not ready in the shorts, you know, looking for taking some advantage of bounces from these levels. You can see if I go to the weekly time frame quickly, this level here is a very, very key level. The market was holding on to it and now we're coming back in. So there is a possibility we could come into this and see some bullish momentum and maintain that bullish momentum for the past, you know, four or five weeks there to, to the upside. So that is mainly the play we're looking at for Ensley CAD now that we've seen that drop. So I've got two areas where I'm focusing on for the buys, this area here and this area here. This here was our prior swing low. You know, forming that low, so we could see price come back into that and push bullish, or if we fail at this key level, again, we can push bullish from there. So, those are the two main areas I'm focused on. You can see this was prior resistance, broke through, never got the retest. So, I'm expecting the market to trickle down to this area anyway. And if we can start to see a shift in momentum, we'll look for buys back to the upside, I'm not looking for higher highs or anything just to push back up into that zone. Same thing if that level fails. And we'll be looking at this area for another push to the upside. For the meantime, expecting a little bit more downside for NZCAD to start the week. Uh, and then when, when we come to one of these areas, we'll let's see how it reacts. Uh, and then if you can get some of those signals, we'll look for buys back up to 0.87500 for next week. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at pound NZD. So for this pair, not too much this week, mainly just consolidation, moving sideways before late in the week, we did roll over and see some nice downside. Now for pound NZD, you can see on the lower time frames, not too much from it. I was looking for a push uh, into the 1.93500 area, which was this area here. So yeah, 1.93500, uh, which is, you can see we came pretty close to before the market did roll over. So we didn't quite see the test of that area. But as you can see, the market is still very, very bare. So I'm actually expecting the market to eventually get here, whether it has a deeper retracement, see some upside before it um, you know, comes back down or it just drops. You know, either way, I'm expecting 1.89 to be tested 
and potentially taken out as well. So I'm looking overall for more downside. You can see we rolled over, formed some equal lows here. So I'm expecting the market to retrace and come out and take this level. Obvious area we're looking to sell from would be this you know, area of supply resistance, including that 1.93500 level just slightly above it. We could you know, creep up into that area, wick into the 1.93 and, and then drop from there. So either way around here, we're looking for sell. So I'm gonna be still be bearish on this pair after that push, was looking for that bigger retracement, but the market was just far too bearish. Uh, I said if we do break through 1.935, I'll be looking for some of these areas, but as you can see, uh, the bears are just far too strong at the moment. So looking for sales coming into this area, as long as we don't take up 1.935, uh, I'm overall expecting push into 1.89. If we do take out uh, 1.935, we might see a little bit more upside into this area, which was my second target for last week, something like this before maybe we do you know, see that deeper um, continuation. So this is the main player I'm looking for for next week. Um, yes, there might be some longs if we take that out, but not too focused on that. Just mainly focused on maintaining this bear structure here, take out those lows uh, and a push into 1.89 before next week. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to CAD JPY. So this pair, again, another hectic pair that has been consolidating for quite a long time now. Again, coming into the week, I was more neutral on CAD JPY, but I could both see reasons price would go bullish and go bearish. So I was more neutral. I was framing the short side, looking for price to roll over. I had multiple attempts to go bullish, but the market was still failing. So I was expecting this to break to the downside. It looks like it might be breaking to the upside. Again, I'm not 100% convinced just because we've got the level right there. It's closed kind of weekly above that level. We've seen some nice bullish momentum, but I don't look too much uh, into momentum when the market is consolidating just because the market could seem quite bullish at one point, reject the level and seem just as bearish the next. So I'm not looking too much into momentum. I'm just seeing you know how, how we break a level and if we can sustain that break. We had a break earlier on in the week. So from this moment here, I was expecting the market to, to hold that break, sustain that level and roll over. We closed back above, saw a nice push to the upside and now we're closing back above that level. So again, it's still a little bit more neutral. Potentially we could see the momentum take us into highs. You know, I did highlight last week two areas where if I'm expecting price to go when we do break out, break to the upside, I'm looking for 93, break to the downside. I'm looking for a push into 88 down here. So, you know, either one of those levels is where catch up by probably will go uh, once it gets that, that break. So now that we've closed above, you know, there's either two things that can happen really for this pair. Either this is the true break, we sustain the break, form a higher low on the retest, and we can look for continuations back up into 93, looking for about around 118 pips, 120 pips uh, to the upside. So that's the most obvious play, but again, it could easily be false with that wick it just left us before the close. So if we do dive back underneath, show some rejection, so show a lower high or something like that, we'll be expecting the market just to roll over and just maintain that range like it's been doing for the past few weeks now. So um, two players at hand there. Uh, again, still a little bit more neutral, favoring the longs now after we've seen that break, but it could easily be false. So not gonna get married to that bias, to that bias just yet. So if we can hold uh, above 91,700, looking for the longs into 93, break back below, gives us a nice retest, low high, something like that. We'll look for uh, shorts back down into 90 for next week. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to pound USD. So as you can see, this pair is still very, very bearish. Coming into the week, I was mainly interested to see what happens at this price swing low, at that support at 1.32. I said, if we can hold this, looking for a push back to the upside into this level here. As you can see, pretty early on the week, we closed back below, so the market did not hold that level. I said, if you do break through, I'm looking for a push into 1.30500, which was this resistance here on the left, which we never got the retest of when price did break through, looking for price to come into that level there, which you can see price is actually 
beneath that a little bit. So we did see price break through that level, go and hit that 1.30500 target. Now that was still looking bearish, I'm expecting the market to actually push on further. Everything is still pointing down for pound USD, pound is still weak, dollar is still strong, trend still intact, even high time frames are still pointing to the downside. So, you know, unless you're looking for intraday, you know, smaller bullish moves from pounds, everything is still pointing um, bearish until something um, big that shifts everything happens. Now, looking from the higher time frames, Again, similar to EURUSD, failed to take out this high here, respect that came down. You can see this, the monthly time frame, by the way. We've had a couple of attempts to try and redeem this bullish momentum. Failed once, failed a second time, and now we're seeing the bears really take control. So I'm expecting the market to push back it down into this support here, which is at 1.28, uh, 800, we'll say, uh, back into this support here. So that is now the target for pound USD for the market to push down, fill that gap into this support, where maybe it might start to find some feet and see some upside or you know break down into this support. Who knows? We'll have to find out. Uh, and see, but that is the target uh, for pound USD. So just we'll, we'll call it 1.29. 1.29 is what we're going to be looking for. So now that we're holding this support here, resistance, you can see a nice break and retest of that wick, 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 wick. Now throw some wick to the upside, 1.32 is holding. So as long as we go and take out that level, I'm expecting 1.29 to be hit potentially by the end of next week. So Two main areas I'm focused on for pound USD. We have this price support here now holding the resistance. We could see something like this uh, and the market roll over. So we'll be looking for those shorts from around this area into 1.29 or if we see slightly deeper retracement into 1.32. Again, still looking for those shorts. Targets again back down to 1.29 can get some really healthy risk to reward setups on this one. So as long as we don't go break back above 1.32, I'm still bearish looking for 1.29. Break above 1.32, I'm looking for a retest of this level because we did break through this and no retest at 1.33, which probably could actually give us some nice sales to be honest back down again if we can break through 1.32. But these are two main setups I'm focused on, a break and retest the 1.31, so retest it again essentially and come back and retest 1.32 and targets down at 1.29 for next week. Okay, so now I've got pound CAD on my screen. So pound CAD, as you can see, still looking very, very bearish. Coming into the week, we were bearish on this one. I said targets back down at this level here, which is 1.665. We came pretty close early in the week, saw some nice retracement and then rolled over to go and hit our 1.6. 6500 target you can see how bearish the market is we haven't seen much retracement from this impulsive move here if i do go quickly onto the higher time higher time frames you can see the market is now putting these major swing highs uh, in the market telling us that we're about to roll over and see some uh, see some downside essentially and break out potentially of this range um, of this range which price has been in for you know I don't know how long, but it seems like forever. So I'm looking for pound CAD to see a lot more downside if this is actually the breakout. We could even see price, you know, back down here from a technical standpoint. You know, we could see price down at those lows in not too long. So uh, I've got two targets for pound CAD. One, the price is not too far from. You can see the bottom of this wick here. You can see we're almost there. We pull back a little bit. So I'm expecting price is going to take out this wick soon. And we've got the, the, the bodies here. One of the wicks under the bodies there, uh, which gave us that last push to the upside at around 1.62. So target one, the wick, not too far away. It's 1.62, I'll probably expect maybe two or three weeks before we do get there, maybe even less to be fair, depending on momentum. Uh, and if you do really see a breakout, but these are the two targets I'll have. Everything's looking bearish. You can see the low highs on the weekly. Everything is pointing to the downside. Now that we've taken out this support level here, we can use it as resistance. And as long as we don't push past this prior high here, which is our last swing high, pull back, forming the high before the low, as long as we don't push past that level here, I'm bearish, you know, until 1.62 really. So only looking for shorts for the next few weeks now for pound CAD. We've got this support here, which now be termed resistance, which we haven't retested. So first area of interest will always be the break and retest of this area. Looking for sales into this wick 
and then you can probably just play the psychological levels you know as we go along uh, into that 1.62 area if we do see deep retracement then we'll be looking at this next setup at 1.69 same thing as well, looking for shorts to the downside as long as we don't take that level out, you know, back into that support, back into that support and then into that wick down here and then 1.62 will be the next target from there on. But everything is showing bearish momentum. We've got from a monthly, weekly, daily, in a four hour, everything is pointing bearish. So no real reason unless you're looking for some intraday scalps, intraday, you know, short term trades for buys. Um, on, on, on the pullbacks, everything is pointing down. So looking for more continuation uh, and end, ta end targets for, for pound CAD in the next couple of weeks at 1.62. Okay, so next up we've got pound JPY. So for this pair, still bearish on this one, looking for shorts this week. Uh, predominantly this week, we've just seen some retracement. So I do believe the market is still getting ready to be shorted to the downside. I still have my targets at 149 for pound JPY looking for push into that level. We're still holding 153 as a resistance. Was that price swing low there as support now holding as resistance? So I'm still looking for sales journey from this area. Nice week there on Friday. And as long as we don't push past this high here, I'm still bearish on pound JPY. There's a chance we could obviously break above 153 into 154, maybe even 155 before we do see that continuation into 149. Break through this, I'll probably end up changing my bias and we'll probably start seeing um, some upside back into the highs up there. But I'm not focused on that right now. Looking at the shorts from this area to the downside, if we break above, then yeah, shorts from anywhere within that range really. So uh, with that said, bring it into the lower time frames. You can see the market start to run out of energy around this 150 mark. So we'll be looking for some shorts early on in the week for pound JPY, uh, seeing what the price action is giving us. And then if it is looking good and we get a signal, we'll look to short. Uh, and again, first targets always have to be the swing low. Uh, and then I'll be looking at 149 down there. If we decide to go a bit higher, there's 154, some nice supply in this area. Or again, that prior high there at 155, either which way, as long as we don't take out this level here, still having that bearish bias and overall targets at 149. So looking at another big move, four pound JPY, and you know, looking at 300, potentially 500 pips, depending on when we, we turn bearish from um, for this pair. So more shorts looking for four pound JPY this week. Targets at 149, looking for shorts at 153, 154, or 155 for next week. Okay, so now I'm going to take a look at gold. So gold being very, very hectic past few days for this one, very, very bullish, almost taking out uh, those previous highs on the left, as you can see here, draw the wick across at 2075. We came to about 2070. So very, very close, quite a substantial pullback there on the weekly there with that candle. Uh, we could obviously still fill the wick and head higher. I think we probably will eventually doing that, eventually you know, fill the wick and see some more upside. But there's also a probability that we might retrace now because um, again, a lot of people will be trapped in some bias here, fear of missing out the, of the move higher. So we could see some downside before we, you know, we go higher. So taking that information onto the 4H, you can see the market has obviously found a level at this area, which is failing to break through a bit of a false break early in the week, close back below. It's also a nice downside at around 2000, which is a very, very, you know, psychological, strong psychological level for, for gold. So if we hold this level here, again, I'm expecting the market to drop to the downside. Uh, and I'm looking at two main areas. Um, you have this area which price stalled for quite a long time, wick, 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 went up, came back in a few more wicks before that bigger push. So I'm looking at shorts back down into this area firstly. 1920 and then possibly 1890 which is that support there obviously depending on support there is a bit of a minor level through here so do pay attention to that but those are the drops i'm looking for and that is only if we hold this level then i'll expect the momentum to drop if we break through then i'm expecting the market to remain bullish you know can we look for the break and retest uh, and then from then on, I'm expecting these highs to be taken out. We came very, very close to take those highs out. We came to 2070, highs at 2075. So I do believe now, probably see the highs getting taken out, you know, both highs essentially, 
and you know um, gold can, can continue to fly from then on if it wants to so break and retest if we get um, above that and then the you know, targets back at those highs if we fail for another attempt looking for price to roll down into one of these levels again depending on your targets or wherever um, you, know, you can take profit wherever you like but those are the levels that I'm expecting price to roll over to and then you know we can start looking for some buys back up again because at that point we've seen some deeper retracement and then we can get some nice longs uh, later on so that's the plan for the week we'll keep an, an eye on that level see what we do fail shorts back down into 1940 1920 1890 break above longs back to highs And last but not least, we've got Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, as you can see, this market is still basically consolidating, to be honest, uh, on the daily chart. Um, however, the market is looking like it's about to roll over soon. There is a trend line kind of saving Bitcoin's life right now, uh, which is this trend line going through the bodies there. Um, but I believe when this breaks, uh, I'm expecting the market to drop. Uh, and like I've been saying for the past few um, weeks now, I'm looking for price to return back to this area around the 31 30k mark for bitcoin so i'm expecting some downside you can see this prior structural high here on the left so we've had a nice uh, rollover downside move pullback forming that lower high another downside move forming that low price has come back to respect that area one two three times and failed to break each time also seeing some strong shifts and momentum back to the bears so that's obviously telling us that the bears are still not backing away pools have tried to, to to save bitcoin a little bit to break through 44 but it's still holding firm so as a result i'm looking for this one to roll over midweek had a little bit of push to the upside again rolled over aggressively still showing us signs that the bears are still taking control and this could be you know a, a lower high for us to roll over lower than this high and that high over there so uh, coming into the week, I gave two areas for the shorts. Um, I said at this area, which price came and wicked, I'm um, not wicked, but closed above a little bit and then broke underneath. And then I also said this area here, which price is holding right now. So again, same as um, last week, really, you can be looking for shorts in one of these areas here, or both of them. If this one breaks, looking for shorts back up here uh, and expecting some downside. The safest um, way to, to get into a trade, a short trade for Bitcoin, would obviously be waiting for the break of the trend line, a, a lower high from that retest, uh, and then catching some sales. So if you are looking at some shorts, you know I do recommend waiting for that break, a lower high to form, uh, and targets down that 31k mark. But obviously these areas here, which are proven to be strong areas of resistance, can provide some nice sales if you want to get in a little bit early and catch a little bit more pips. Uh, on the drop to downside. So I'm still bearish from Bitcoin. Nothing's telling me that this is going up. Uh, kind of three areas looking at break it out, out of the trend line, low high, then drop. Retest of that, which price is currently doing. So look for some sales early on. Uh, or if you do push high one more time, back to 42, then look for the drop into 31. Either way, I'm bearish from Bitcoin looking for 31k in the upcoming days okay guys that is the end of the video hope you all enjoyed that and found that useful like always guys leave comments down below if you have any questions didn't understand anything or agree or disagree with my analysis let me know in the comments if you are enjoying the content please leave a like on the video if you have subscribed already what are you waiting for join the family and also hit the bell so you don't miss out on any uploads or streams in the week but i hope you all have a great weekend and i'll catch you all on the next one